everyone, it's Ginny Belly. Every so often there is a reoccurring theme that I see happening around me in the online community around me that um, happens so often it gets to a point where I feel a calling to do a video on it. So this one is on comparison which comparing ourselves is um, an inherently human thing anyway but I think it's a lot more prevalent 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 um, for us as artists and we always tell ourselves to not compare ourselves it's all we ever tell ourselves is you shouldn't compare yourself blah 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 but I don't ever really see any actions to not comparing ourselves so in this video what I'm going to do is share stories share tips, share techniques, share outlooks, share ways to deal with comparison so it's basically a little bit of a mini workshop so maybe not all of the things I'm going to discuss are going to work for you but there might be something in there one thing that you can take um, to help you deal with your issues of comparison so the last thing that happened that really made me decide to do a video on this was my very good online friend my actual my online BFF um, who is a member of my Ning site journal workshop she said to me that the gallery on general workshops, loads of people are posting like really good artwork on there and rather than it doing what I was hoping would happen for everybody, i.e. inspire everybody, <laughs> what has happened with her is it has made her compare herself uh, to the point where she's kind of, uh, I think she was just saying that she was, it was paralysis for creating anything because she was comparing herself too much. And uh, and it is comparing yourself, and I'm now going to discuss uh, a couple of stories. They're not about artwork, they're about me, they're about life, they're personal stories because we don't separate ourselves from our artwork. Um, if we feel like a piece of our artwork is crap, we generally apply that to ourselves as we're not a very good artist and we're not worthy. Da 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 da. We, artwork is personal. <laughs> we don't stand ourselves back from it. So I'm going to share some personal stories of comparison to demonstrate the point that I want to make here. The first story I want to share is from when I was a teenager and basically the issues that I think all girls have growing up is comparing ourselves to others, comparing ourselves how we look to the images that we are bombarded with of how we feel like we should look. If I was objective about it, I might have seen that I was kind of like the images that were in the magazines. I've, um, I was a lot prettier when I was younger and I'm not looking for fishing for compliments or anything like that. It's just a case of some women um, grow into their beauty and some women have it early and I was unfortunately the latter and I had it early. <laughs> um, and I'm not fishing at all but I, I looked more then like if I looked at it objectively like what was in the magazines. I was skinny, I had big boobs, I had long hair, I was quite pretty, da 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 da. And against the girls that maybe were around me I was a lot more like what was in the magazines but when I, but in my head, in comparison to the other girls, all I saw was the attributes that they had that I didn't have. You know, I never really looked at what I did have. Before I go any further with this, I want to go on to the second story. The second story is a few years before this, um, when I was at school. And um, basically, the school I went to was atrocious. It was, it was quite a bad school. The groups of kids that were put together weren't put together by their learning um, requirements. We were just kind of dumped together in a random pile and what it meant was that a lot of the time, uh, the, you know, maths we were separated. A to C group and then D. Fail group. That, that was the only separation that there was. Um, but I remember just having lessons upon lessons upon lessons where we never learned anything because the kids that wanted to play up uh, got all of the attention <laughs> and I remember one particular subject, history, um, the, the naughtiest kid in school hated 
the history teacher. I mean, he really had a had a hatred for this history teacher. So he played up in lessons every single time he was in there, and I never learnt a scrap of history in school. Um, because this teacher almost every time had a nervous breakdown over how badly this, this kid was acting. Anyway, it was an awful school. And, ooh, paraglider. Um, to give you an example, um, every single Thursday, me and my best friend used to play hooky. <laughs> every single Thursday morning, we would go to McDonald's, we would go to the photo booths, we would go shopping, we'd do whatever teenagers do every single Thursday morning and never once were we caught out on it so not the teachers that were supposed to be taking the lessons and knew that we should be in there and we weren't um, and we were caught several times by teachers out and about in the town that we went into to you know have a good time in and they never said anything so the nicest way of putting this is that those teachers knew that we were the good kids <laughs> and didn't want to cause trouble for us. The bad way of thinking it is that they just didn't care. Um, if my mum mother watches this she's gonna kick my ass. <laughs> Sorry mum. It wasn't important lessons, it was like PE or um, community studies, things that didn't have any any grades to them I promise. But anyway. <laughs> And what I learned in school was, I'm not bragging again, I'm not a genius or anything, but I am fairly clever and I didn't need to um, do any work to get the grades. I was looking around all, all of the other people around me, um, majority of which seemed to not care, it might have just been that it, well the kids that tried, kids that got grades got picked up, that was the kind of environment I was in. And the fact was I didn't need to try to get grades, so I did the bare minimum in school, I did the bare minimum for homework, sometimes not even that, <laughs> and I passed all of my exams. The only thing I remember working in was German. Um, I remember spending one evening working on it, for just one evening, because the teacher had graded me a D for my, you know, if you carry on at this, this is what you're going to get. And in that one evening, I turned it around to a B. It's been Jennifer, <laughs> Carver, Einen, Hunde. So in that environment, um, it was comparison to others and kind of not wanting to be the odd one out, you know, that kind of got me where I was. So in comparison to the first story, I compared myself to everybody else. Again, I kind of wanted to be everybody else. So although I might have, you know, looked like this girl in the magazine, I wanted to look like that one that had blonde hair, whatever it was, you know. Um, and if I would have thought about it from this side, thought about it from, if I would have just realised um, that I had what was valued I would have had a lot more confidence and yes looking at it on this side looks don't matter and I'm a lot happier now in myself than what I was back then I don't think I suffered any kind of major comparison issues more than any other girl I think it's what everybody goes through but that's the things that leads to you know some really bad situations with some girls and boys and what we are, you know, this is another, this is another topic entirely, but that is what we are told is valuable, is how you look, is what you are worth. That is what we are kind of taught as we are growing up. And it doesn't really even matter if you get influences telling you it's not about that, it's, you know, it's about your other characteristics. Um, it, you're just bombarded with um, the information that that is what it's about. So if I'd have looked at it from this end, I would have had the confidence and you could say what you want about about looks and it being all vain and it is, but that is something that comes with wisdom. Back then, confidence is important to be who you are, to go after the opportunities that you want to, to speak up for yourself, to do all, to, to just be authentic. 
without confidence it's very hard to do that and that with the first story of looking at it from the other end if I would have tried I could have got really good grades and um, it wasn't until I went to university that I realised that, that it hit me, that academic work actually hit me, <laughs> that it was hard to do because it was the first time I had to work for it and if I would have tried maybe a little bit earlier I would have prepared myself for that. I mean I didn't go to a um, great uni or anything. I wasn't able to understand until I got to that other environment though how bad my schooling had been. Um, but that's just a way that comparison is a blessing. So the purpose of these two stories is to get you to look at the other end of it, the other side of it, the other you. Um, the you that maybe has done everything that you're currently looking for or had everything already that you are already looking for. Look at it from the perspective of the other side, okay, if you can get my meaning, as if you've lived through it. If that doesn't help, then look at it from another person's perspective. Um, and I'm not meaning to be mean here, but most other people that you just think about somebody that you randomly come into contact with, they pretty much won't really care about your art. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, I just mean that everybody has their own issues and, and you know, your comparison issues. So they, they might be just thinking, what the hell are you moaning about? You have got this ability to create art, which they might not have anyway. So look at it either from the other end or look at it from another person's perspective. I mean, you shouldn't really compare yourself to anybody else anyway because nobody else has ever had the they weren't born with the same skills that you have the same attributes they haven't gone through the same life circumstances that you have um own experiences but we tend to compare ourselves regardless Somebody that is brand new to art will compare themselves to somebody that is a professional artist or has been doing it for years and you know you've done it for three Sundays <laughs> and you compare yourself to somebody that you know has got hours and hours and hours of experience on you which is ludicrous um, and not only that but they might have particular skills in a particular area inherent anyway they might have to work in other areas that you have skills in but what you're looking at you don't know, it might be something that comes naturally to them or they've had to work damn bloody hard at to get and you're comparing it as soon as you as soon as you've, you know, picked up a paintbrush pretty much. So there's that way to look at it. Or if you aren't brand new but you compare yourself, really try if you have to compare yourself, compare yourself to yourself. meaning your old art journals. My old art journals, the pages that I, when I did them I thought they were awesome. I look back on now and I can giggle at and think that was really rubbish. <laughs> or things that you thought were rubbish you can look back on and go, um, it's basically like it's a snapshot of your journey and you can look on the back of it sentimentally and fondly um, and it's a great tool looking back at your work to see how far you've grown and although I, I giggled and said I can look back on it and say that it's rubbish that isn't being detrimental to that, that is just a testament to saying how much you have grown and pages that you might have wanted to burn when you first did them now you can look back on really fondly as realising that you might have needed that page and that page and that page and that page to help you figure out how to do this it might have given you this skill or this technique. So that's a few ways to look at it. And to look at it that you, by knocking yourself, you are actually a creation yourself of something. Whether you believe in God, whether you believe in the universe or source, whatever you believe, we are a creation ourselves. So you're knocking somebody else's creation by knocking yourself. So look at the 
attributes and skills that you have been given. And maybe realise that the reason why you are comparing yourself might be a tool in itself. It might be that you are looking at something that somebody else can do that you want to develop. It might be um, it might be your intuition telling you um, to go down this direction. Although the video is called How to Stop Comparing Yourself, it might not actually be the purpose of this next point, but I don't necessarily believe that it's realistic to say stop comparing yourself because everybody does it. It is in our DNA. Um, I think it's probably, if you whittle it down, it's back to being a survival tactic. So like with how to stop comparing yourselves or how to overcome fear, I don't necessarily think these things are things that we should avoid like a plague. They're in us for a reason and I think rather than being afraid of them, we should tap into them and see what they're trying to say to us. So like with fear, I know from experience that when I am fearful to do something, it's probably the thing that I should be doing, it's probably the route that I should be taking because it is, otherwise I won't be frightened of it. You know, if it's something that I've done a thousand times before, um, then I probably wouldn't be frightened of it. It's probably something new, it's probably change, and it's probably the change that your inner consciousness is kind of protecting you from happening. But the point of fear is there to protect you from basically physical danger, physical harm. Um, and you aren't dealing with those situations. If you're fearful of something, it's probably because um, it's your guidance system telling you you should be doing it. You know I'm not talking about sticking your fingers in the fire or something here. I'm talking about projects or opportunities or something that comes along in your life, love, that you are scared of. That is what I'm talking about. The biggest parts where you are going to be fear is usually the places where you're going to be most rewarded. And I think it is also true with comparison. It is there. These feelings are not bad. They are there to basically be um, a compass for your intuition. So it might be that you are comparing yourself and you're down on yourself because you don't have this. But it's just telling you that you need to work on getting this. That's your... your your instinct telling you where it is you want to go, it's telling you what it is you want to develop. Um, but at the same time, if you're comparing yourself and it's getting to the point where it's just total paralysis, it could be that you just need to step completely away from doing anything for now. And. I can't tell you which one it is and I know these two things are completely opposing but that needs that is down to you you know yourself better than anybody and you need to figure out which one it is I'll give you an example of how I would uh, differentiate these two these two um, areas is the first one if I am maybe comparing myself to one particular artist then I might consider that it's my intuition telling me that it, there's something within this artist's work that I admire or, you know, I'm jealous I don't have that skill yet. So whether it is their um, great perspectives or whether it's their use of colour or something like that. If it's a particular artist, then I need to look into why I might be feeling that way. If it is just every artist I see, if it's every artwork I see, if it's everything at all <laughs> that is, um, I'm feeling that comparison with and I, I'm feeling down on myself, then I probably need to step away because I'm just in one of those pissy moods <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and I'm not perfect. I get in those moods, everybody gets in those moods, which is why I think that it's kind of ridiculous to say you've got to stop comparing yourself. Um, and why I wanted to give these maybe different tools as different ways to look at it. For example, my um, my online BFF, who was had the issue with looking in the gallery and 
you know, comparing herself to the point where she was down on herself, I actually used her artwork in my free online class and the Inspiration Station. Um, and if you haven't taken it, why not? It's free. Go take it. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, and do you think I would use her work if I thought it was crap? Or do you create that? Do you think I would have not used her? Would I have used her work if I didn't love it? There, I loved her work. I wanted to use it in my journals in the Inspiration Station class, um, and that could have been a way that she maybe looked at it from another person's person's perspective, looked at it from mine. That's just me giving all of the tips and techniques I can think of right now to help deal with comparing yourself um, yeah I think that's all I can think of right now I hope it's helped something I hope you've picked something out of this um, and it's been a supportive video for you if you do have more issues with your artwork um, or you want more support with your artwork, I would say to come over to journal workshops because we are a very supportive community um, and there's a bunch of people's perspectives on things. So what I might do is put this video up as a discussion um, and ask for other people to give their tips and techniques for quote unquote stop comparing yourself to either figure out why you are doing it, use it, or to look at it from another perspective, you know. Yeah, and the group on there is awesome. It's very loving and supportive over there where we can talk about these kind of issues and hopefully um, there will just be more coming in the future as well. Because I feel like we need this, we need the support and we need to figure out ways where we can exchange these tips and techniques rather than just saying, we shouldn't compare yourself we need to know how so yeah i hope you come along to journal workshops there's a lot to take from such a giving and sharing community so yeah i hope this has been useful much love to you bye everyone